Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. You're the blessedness of the Father. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. I love you all. Thank you all so much. Subscribers, thank you. Those that are sharing, thank you. Those that are passing through, thank you. I love you all so very much. Amen and amen. So today, I want us to look at this um, subject of um, the Lord reconciling our children born out of wedlock back to himself. Yes, we're going to look at that dimension today. You know, we've been speaking concerning accusations. Yes, accusations, because the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 12, it says the accuser of the brethren who continues to accuse them day and night has been what? He has been hurled down. So now you can see, it says that what? Let's read it together. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come salvation and power, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been what? Hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. So you can begin to see. Now, a lot of, uh, you know, brothers, sisters, out there, you know, it's a place where I know a lot of you, you know, majority of you, and for those who are going to be listening for the first time, um, a lot of you have now become born again to God be the glory. You know, you've repented of the mistakes that you made. We thank God for that. But I want you to understand that the child that you had out of wedlock, did you know that what? There was a door that was open in the realm of the spirit for that child to be what? To be held captive. Yes, it, it, it's right there in the word of the Lord. And the reason why we're here today is because the father wants to finally close that what? Close that door in order that what? The fullness of him may come upon that child. Maybe you, you're now an adult and it happened to you as well while you were what? A child. You know, it is not the will of the father for any person to get married outside of what? outside of marriage. No, not at all. It's not the will of the Father. No, not at all. No matter how much you try to justify it, it's not the will of the Father. So you can begin to understand. This is the reason why he said what? You know, we should wait until what? We should wait until we get married. Flee from fornication. Flee from, you know, immorality. Flee, you know, we should do away with all of these things. We should not walk in immorality, the acts of the flesh, according to Galatians 5, 19, all the way to 21. You know, he doesn't want us to walk in those sins, but a lot of us, we did in times past in ignorance. Our parents, they did the same in ignorance. And we have to look at it this way. The Bible says, be merciful for you shall also obtain mercy. So the Lord is looking to you to show mercy. Why? Because sometimes it is not the fault of the people. Sometimes it could be a situation they found themselves in and eventually that came to be. But the Lord is wanting to bring mercy and show that mercy in order to reconcile those children, including yourself, if you are one of those, you know, to bring them back into the fullness of who he is. Because most of the sufferings that people are suffering is because they were born out of wedlock. Do you see it? It was born out of wedlock. So now you can see it's all there in the Bible. Okay, let's look at, uh, you know, Psalm 51. A lot of us have read this Psalm time and time again, you know, and it's a place where, you know, it, I think this is where uh, a majority of the story of David came. You know, David's mother, you know, was probably not part of, we're not here for all of that in itself because the Bible did not say so. So if the Bible did not say so, we're not basically going to go into that at all. But we're going to go by what the written word says. The Bible says here, it says uh, in uh, Psalm 51, and it says, you know, it says in, 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 my, in, 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 my, in sin, my mother conceived me. Can you see it? It said in sin, my mother conceived me. You can see it. The Bible says here in verse 5 of Psalm 51, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. You know, David was saying that in itself, you know, probably speaking that, hey, you know, recognizing, you know, his, you know, his limitations. We don't know at the state of that which is written, but I'm reading the word of God and to describe that a lot of people who gave birth out of what? Out of wedlock. It was in sin. You conceived that child. It was in adultery. It was in fornication, immorality that that child was conceived. 
can you see in that dimension? And for conceiving that child out of wedlock, it has what? Opened the door for the enemy to come against that child. And why did I say so? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, and all the way to verse 6. But we're going to read verse 4. And it says here, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. That means the bed should remain undefiled at all times because the marriage is honorable. So the father wants to keep you pure and blameless until the time of marriage. And while you are in marriage at the same time, the bed should remain undefiled. Adultery and fornication should not be in that in itself. Because it goes on to say, but warmongers and adulterers, God will judge. So the judgment coming against, you know, people, you know, the children at this point in time, including yourself, probably when you were growing up, is because, yes, some people, maybe their parents had an affair outside of marriage and eventually they give birth to a child. So you can see that dimension. And we're going to look at some scriptures for you to be able to understand what I am basically speaking today. So let's look at the story of Abraham, for example. Abraham had Sarah. God had already promised them a child. Now look at it. Sarah could not take it anymore. Look, I have gone past you know, bearing age. There is my maid. Go into her and have your baby. And there he was. You know, God had already told Abraham, you're going to have a child. But he listened to his wife. So upon listening to his wife, you know, Hagar gave birth. Now, can you see? She began to act all strange. She was sent away. And upon being sent away, the angel of the Lord said, go and submit yourself to your boss. And then eventually, you know, not to worry about the child. God has already blessed the child. She went. She, got, she, she gave birth to the baby. Now, Sarah, eventually, she had a baby. Now, what did she do? She sent. You see, the union was between Abraham and what? And Sarah. Now, when she had her own child, what did she do? She sent Hagar away so that she might not have inheritance, so that Ishmael might not have inheritance with Isaac. Is that a good thing to do? Not at all. You know, and Abraham was there, but that's my child. And God had to tell him, listen to your wife. Because why did God tell him to listen? I'd already told you, you're going to have a child. So why did you, why did you listen to your wife? It's just the same thing that happened to Adam and Eve. Why did you listen to Eve? I told you do not eat of this fruit, but you went and ate of it. I mean, you went and you ate, you ate from it. And what happened eventually? Look at it. It said, cursed be the ground. God had to curse. Can you see that <laughs> in itself? Because you listened to your wife. So now, look at Ishmael. Ishmael was blessed, you know, had the nations, you know, the 12 tribes, as the Lord promised. You know, Isaac also had the 12 tribes. But you can see how the two, two sides of the family was always at war with one another. The one always wanting to kill the Israelites. If only they had waited. If only you had waited till marriage. If only you had waited. But now the deed has been done and the Lord wants to show mercy upon your life. So not only that in itself, as we see in the book of what? In the book of, uh, 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 what's it called? In the book of uh, Genesis, you know, and in the book of Hebrews, we're also looking at it. You know, when I said, when you did that, you had opened the door for the enemy to come in and basically begin to, you know, come against that child in, in a manner that is absolutely not good. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah 49, let's look at Isaiah 49 and verse 23. This is what it says, verse 23 all the way to the end. And the kings, it says, and kings shall be your nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered. But thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with them that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am the Savior, and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. So you can now begin to see in verse 24 that the lawful, that means the moment you conceive that child in sin, the child was lawfully held captive. Yes, lawfully. Why did I say lawfully? Because the child was conceived in sin. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 2, what did he say? And the law of the spirit. Do you see that? The law of the spirit. So you can begin to see that the Bible in itself is so beautiful, but the mercy of God is absolutely amazing. It says the law of the spirit. So shall we read it together? This is what he says in Romans 8, 2. It says here, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So the moment you conceive that child in sin, the law of sin and death was basically activated. But the Lord has already given a promise. He says that what? Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be what? Shall be delivered for I will contend. So even though they will be taken away, <laughs> yes, even though the prey of the terrible be delivered, he says everybody that content against what it is that I've, you know, if I've chosen you, if you're chosen and I called you, he says anybody that contends against you, if you're born again and you, you, you decided to surrender to the Lord, anybody who contends Contend against you, I will contend with them and I will save that child. Can you see that in itself? Because all of these things, they have consequences. You know, some so all those who are basically who were born, you know, in the in the very uh, 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 orchestration of marriage, we bless the Lord for you. You know, may the Lord continue to bless you and be with you, and you, may you continue to flourish in Jesus' mighty name. But you know, most of the time, you know, I know those who who are born in marriage, they go, they have their own difficulties too. We're not basically disregarding that. But then we're talking about those who are born outside of marriage, because majority of them they face things that are even far more. So you can see, there are far more. Think about it. You have a, you know, you have a child. You're there. You know, eventually you have this child outside, and then the Lord promises you you're going to get married. You finally get married, and then upon getting married, you have these children. You know, you're having the children of the new husband, and this one that you had outside of marriage. Do you feel, do you see that? You know, they're trying. They're always going to try to fit in, they try, because that's not their father. You know, this is a man who has come, and then they're trying to. So you can see that dimension of the struggle in which sometimes they will have to endure. And that's why it says he that endure, so they will have to endure till the end until they probably leave the house and they go get married on their own. So you can begin to see it. So like I said, there is therefore now no condemnation. So this is not condemning anybody whatsoever. No, not at all. Because the Lord loves you so very much. He loves that child. He loves that son. He loves that daughter. And he loves you as well. Because you as well might have gone through the same thing. And he loves your parents who perhaps they too, they went through the same thing. But he wants to reconcile. So that you will no longer be what? Lawfully held captive. So that he whom the son sets free is what? Free indeed. Now, I want you to look at another dimension, right? In the book of Judges chapter 11. This is a man, right? <laughs> so this man, he was basically there, you know, because that child did not ask to be born, right? No, not at all. The, the child didn't ask to be born. Now, look at it. The Bible says in Judges chapter 11, Jephthah, the Gileadite, he was what? A mighty warrior. What did Isaiah 49 say? <laughs> Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? And look at Hebrews, look at Judges chapter 11. He was a mighty warrior. <laughs> to God be the glory. He said his father was Gilead. His mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife, also bore him sons. Can you see? It says Gilead's wife bore him sons. And when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away. You are not going to get any inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of what? Another woman. So you can see, you had the child for that man. He was married. You committed adultery with him. Now he's, trying, he's basically writing up his will. And he says, nope. Sorry, uh, you know, my wife has told me, just like, Abra just like Abraham to with Sarah, you know, I can't include him in the inheritance. No, not at all. You know, and she's, she's rightfully has, she has the right to do so. Why? Because she is married to him. So you can see, the Bible says, Jephthah fled from his brothers. And why did he flee? It says, because you are the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of 
tub where a gang of scoundrels gathered around him and followed him. Look at where he ended up. So you can see most of the time when people, you know, when these children, when they go away from home, you know, like the prodigal son, and you can understand the reason why all of this is happening because of Isaiah chapter 49. It says that what? The lawful captive delivered. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? So this is where you begin to see because majority of the people that I've met in this dimension, you know, <laughs> how beautiful some of them, their fathers, they pray and their mother, they're always praying for that child. Why? Because of the law that is at work, giving birth to them out of wedlock. So you can see that dimension. So you can see that they didn't need to suffer at all. But now they're going through so much more because of that in itself. So like I've said, you know, I believe we shared a prayer recently when I said for some people, the reason why we have to show mercy is because you don't know the condition of that person when they had that child. So we are not to judge anybody, but to allow the Lord to pray for them. You know what? You have to pray for them. You know, the more you pray for people, the less you're, you're judging them of their behavior. The more you pray for them, the less you're judging them of their character or all of those things. The more you pray for them, the love of the Father is made manifest. Because some people, they can look at other people, oh, that one, that one that has uh, five children out of, uh, you know, <laughs> we don't even know who the father of those five children are, you know, and you're looking and you're speaking that dimension is wrong. But if you pray for them, those five children, wow, it's not their fault. You know what? Well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stand, you know, father, just help me to pray for these children. And you begin to pray for them. And as you're praying for them, the Lord is what? He's reconciling those children back to himself. So you can see, you can see a lot of mothers as well. A lot of fathers, they are ashamed because of what they did, because of that child. Now, God has blessed them with someone. They have to tell that person, well, I had a child out of, you know, outside. You know, ah, may the Lord have mercy <laughs> on each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So it's a place that, you know, is not condemning anybody, but the father is wanting to reconcile that in itself. Because a lot of shame has been put on fathers. A lot of shame has been and disgrace has been put on fathers and mothers when it was absolutely not their fault for having children out of wedlock. For some of them, they purposefully, they knew what they were doing. Yes, they do. <laughs> Can I share this testimony? You know, um, I remember, you know, there was a, there was this brother way back. I, I remember some few years back and um, he was, you know, he was basically, he was in this sanctuary where he met uh, this woman who was basically, she was, she was a witch <laughs> and she was a prostitute, but the brother did not know at that moment in time. So eventually, you know, the brother was like, okay, right, cool. Right. Okay. They were basically, you know, walking together, you know, he thought she was a friend, you know, and then they were walking together. And eventually, the brother was like, you know, he, he would not go to the house, you know, for whatever reason. But then eventually, he, he went there and, um, you know, he thought he was going there just to have a conversation or whatever it was. And eventually, he fell into sin. And when he fell into sin, what happened? You know, he slept with a woman and then he walked away. Only for years later, he began to realize, you know, because he himself, he was born out of what? He was born out of wedlock. Now, the woman, the prostitute, she was trying to have a baby with him. So because she couldn't get him because that brother was in Christ, she decided to use witchcraft and use things, spells and all of those things to sleep with the brother. But fortunately, she didn't have a child for him. So you can see how because of the dimension of him being born out of wedlock, that was what she wanted to lawfully capture him now to have a baby with him. <laughs> Do you see? Because she herself had already two babies, you know, born out of wedlock. I wanted to add his baby to be included. So to basically use witchcraft to hold the baby of that person of what in, in lawful captivity. But thank God, God delivered. Can you see that dimension? You know, poisoning the drink of the brother and then decided to use that to lure him into immorality. Can you see that dimension? Now, this is where, and that's why I said a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters, majority of them, it was not their fault. Because for some people, they were deceived. For some people, they were manipulated. And for some people, they willingly decided to do it. So you can see it. And this is where the father is showing mercy into every dimension because of those children and because of you, because some of you, you basically got into 
you are in this situation as well. Not the fault of your parents. So some of you have to forgive your parents. Some of you have to forgive yourself because it was not you who decided to be born. No, but you came. But the Lord in his wisdom, you know, the Bible says he uses the foolish things to confound the wise. So how much more that the Lord uses those who are what? Those who have been born out of wedlock. He uses them so great. I remember there was a time I was sitting down, you know, and I was, you know, I was, I was just meditating with the Lord and I was just, oh, you know, Father, you know, help me to understand this dimension because you know why? I am, you know, I was, I, I'm in the same dimension too as well, you know, and the Lord was so gracious to me and to help me with my mom and things like that. And it was absolutely amazing with that reconciliation because it was not her fault. It was not my fault. It was nobody's fault, neither of us. So we understood it. So I was now asking the Father, help me to understand this, you know, in dimension, because I've been called a lot of names. I've been called a bastard. I've been called the, you know, you know, they, they, they basically slandered my own mother, you know, the son of a hookup woman and all of those things, which was absolutely wrong. And that is so not true. Not at all. You know, and the best part of it is the Lord was helping to reconcile that dimension. And when I was sitting there, I was helping, I was like, Lord, Father, help me to understand this. And I sat there and the Lord began to show me the dimension of this man. This, you know, I believe he has the greatest, you know, the one of the biggest uh, uh, prayer ministry today. And the father has been, you know, using him in great dimensions. And as I was sitting there, the Lord began to show me this man. And he said, look at him. Look at the dimension he's in now. And he was sharing his testimony. He said, I was born. You know, my mother was not married. You know, she didn't know, you know, bad, good from bad at that moment in time. She was not in Christ at all at that moment in time. And then she went, she had an affair and gave birth to me. But after... After she gave birth to me, you know, people were ridiculing the mother, you know, that, you know, you don't have, because in the, in the group they were in at that moment in time, all of them, they were all married and all of that, but his mother was not married to uh, his father. So in all of that, she found Christ and she began to see Christ. She received forgiveness from the Lord. Now she was now asking the Lord to help her with the son. Now the Lord began to show and he said, this child is going to be great. This child is going to be wonderful. This child is going to go forth in ministry to do what I've called him to do. And look at the beauty of that child today, doing exactly what the Lord had called. So now look at it. Now the people who were basically mocking the mother and him while they were young, where are they today? And look at him, how he has gloriously thrived in what? In the ministry that God has called him. God bless those people. It's not their fault because they've not been in the same position. And this is where the father is helping to understand that it was not your fault that you got there. Maybe your parents didn't know better. At that time, you didn't know better. And now you yourself didn't know better. So now you can begin to see because we've been looking at what? You know, in Ezekiel chapter 18, because the father did the same thing, the child is now doing the same thing. So because the child has seen you, basically you, you had babies out of wedlock. And now look at it. You are now having what? Child out of wedlock. And now the children, they will look to you. Ah, well, if she did it, if he did it, I can do that as well. So you can begin to see how that is playing out. But the Lord wants to close that door so that your children will not go forth in that dimension. So you need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive your parents and you need, and you know, it's a place where if you have a moment with your child, if they've come of age and understanding, you can go through it with them because you know why is to deliver them from any traumas that might manifest from that. Because a lot of times, you know, we've seen it time and time again, those kind of, you know, not all of them. No, not at all. I'm not going to generalize it, you know, in that way, but some of these children, that's why the reason they basically, you know, they basically have a go at their parents. They don't, you know, they have no respect for them and for some who have come into the understanding of the Lord, they honor their parents regardless. So you can see, but the Lord wants you as a parent to know, the Lord wants you as a child, as a son to know that what? It is not your fault. You didn't ask to be born. Do you see it? You didn't ask to be born. You came. So it is time to forgive yourself. It is time to forgive your parents. It is time to forgive, you know, just forgive and let it go. Because you know why? 
the captivity that you got yourself into. Because whether it is addiction, whether it is immorality, you know, because like I was sharing about that brother, you know, who basically ended up in the house of that woman and they were using all manner of spells. You know, there was another lady at the same time who was there and, you know, they were basically in the middle and all of a sudden, you know, she, <laughs> she was using perfumes and colognes to basically what? To lure him again into sin. So they were using that loophole to basically lure him into sin until the Lord had to deliver him from that. I believe I've shared this dimension too. When I shared like, you know, the, the, the mother-in-law that I had in times past who was using, you know, all manners of witchcraft to, to get, you know, to impregnate the daughter at the same time. Because you know why? Because it was that dimension open as well. So you can see that, you know, because it is always a law in the spirit that allows these people. If you read the book of Hosea, and I believe it is, it continues to tell you how these people, they sleep on their bed. They don't, they don't sleep all night until, you know, they basically plan all manners of evil. And in the morning, they expect it to be carried out. And the father is saying, so for the children who were born out of wedlock, it was because you were conceived in sin. Hence why the law of sin and death was at work. So you might not know that in itself. This is why the father is helping you to understand. Keep the marriage honorable. Keep that bed undefiled. Honor your wife. Honor your husband. Love your wife as you love yourself. Love your husband as you love your wife. Wives, submit to your husband. Husband, you know, be, you know, love the Lord. Both of you submit to one another. Love one another. So that you don't go out and begin to, you know, because there are all, you know, the Bible tells us, it says in the last days, there will be seven women to a man. And all they will say is, we just want your name. That's all we want. You can do your own thing. We just want your name. Can you see the dimension of desperation? And why would you? Because not everybody has the right motives. No, not at all. But the father is intended. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because I've been there too. And that's why the father is helping to understand that I want to close that door. It was until I understood this verse that it just really dawned on me like, wow. So that is one of the rules of being held captive concerning this. Because in sin, I was, you were, she was conceived. Can you see? And then eventually, it's not like you're, it's not like you're, you know, you're a sinner. Or, no, it was, it didn't say you <laughs> are a sinner. The, the baby is absolutely pure. The baby is beautiful. The baby did not ask for the life. But he said in sin, it was so, while that person was, so adultery, while adultery was going on, she conceived. While fornication was going on, she conceived. Even while that woman or that man was being raped, while the woman was being raped, she conceived. So you can see the dimensions of it. So while they were being molested, she conceived. So you can see that dimension because it was sin. Whoever was doing that to that woman was, was basically committing all manner of sin. Molesting that woman, committing all manner of sin. So you can begin, you know, it was sinful at that moment in time. Fornication, it was sinful at that moment in time. And the baby was conceived. You didn't ask for it. So it's time you forgive your parents. It's time you forgive yourself. It's time you go to your parents and you say, Mom, Dad, can we share a prayer together? I understand it is not your fault. I understand that, you know, it was all ignorance. Can we share a prayer of forgiveness together? And just forgive them. Father, Daddy, I forgive you. Mommy, I forgive you. And you as well, as the one who brought up that child, you have to forgive your partner or whoever it was, you know, that happened. So it's not a place of, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm having children outside, then where eventually we get married. No, it's, it's wrong. So the act might have been committed. We're not judging you on that. We're helping you to understand the ignorance and the consequences of what you did. But then we're asking that once you move on from this, keep that bed undefiled. Keep that marriage honorable. Keep yourself pure and blameless until you get married. 
Because the Lord is wanting to show you mercy. Do you see it? He loves you. Do you know the love that he has for you? He loves you so very much. So for that child who was rejected and feels like I'm rejected, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, this, this look at this, I, I'm in a family of four. The three came from that marriage. I'm, I'm like, nope, I'm not from that at all. You know, and I'm struck. You know, the father wants to break that struggle because you know why? You've already been accepted in the beloved. You're not rejected. You've been accepted. It's the devil that keeps trying to remind you. Look at how they're treating you. It's because they don't love you. That is not true because you're loved by the Lord. He loves you so very much. And this is the reason why he's calling you so that you can come into the awareness of who you are in him. You are not who your parents have spoken to you about. You are not who the very people around you have said you are. They called you names. They said no. You know, they called you all manner of things. No, you're not what they've spoken concerning you. You are who the Lord. Do you know who you are? You're great. You're mighty. You're beautiful. Look at the father in the book of Isaiah. He has already spoken. He said, you are mighty. Can you see? He says that what? He says, though you, you might be the prey of the terrible, but you've been delivered. And he says, I am here to contend with those who contended against you and those who oppressed you concerning this dimension. Because you were born out of wedlock, he says, I will oppress them with their own flesh and they shall be drunken with their own blood. As with sweet wine and all flesh, they shall know that I am the Lord and thy savior and thy redeemer the mighty one of Jacob. Don't worry about it. You're born to be great. So you can see. Do you see the story of Jephthah? <laughs> Even though they rejected him because he was born of another woman, they needed him. Can you see that dimension? They needed him. They said, you're, you're not part of us, but they needed him. So you might think, you know, if they treated you bad, they don't need you. They're sowing a seed. Eventually, you are born to be great. Eventually, you became great. The Bible says, you know, it was not the dimension of Joseph because Joseph was definitely of Jacob's wife, you know, Rachel. But then the Bible says they came and bowed down before Joseph to acknowledge. And Joseph, what did Joseph say to them? He said, you know, you meant it for evil, but God turned it around for good. So even though it happened in sin, they might have meant it for evil, but God is turning it around for your good. You're beautiful. Look at yourself every day and affirm what is in Christ Jesus. Affirm it over yourself. Can I say that again? Everything in Christ is who you are. You're not rejected. You're beloved. You're loved. And that is why the Father is helping you to understand, to forgive. Forgive your parents because they didn't know better. Forgive yourself. Yes, forgive yourself and show yourself some mercy. It's not their fault. Show yourself some mercy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I just want to pray. Can we share this prayer together? And you can take this prayer and you can pray it with whoever you need to pray with. You know, I believe the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is upon. The Bible says, you know, and the spirit of the Lord is upon him. He has anointed him to preach the gospel and to set the captives free. So I believe, you know, you can share this prayer with them, with your parents or whoever it is, with your son, with your daughter. And the Lord, you know, the Lord would definitely honor that in itself. Amen. So let us share this prayer together. So just repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent for conceiving these children outside of marriage. I forgive the father or the mother and I forgive myself for any emotions that is ungodly that I have harbored against them. In any way that I have blamed them, I repent of it. I bless them. I bless myself. And I bless them with mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 
I'm going to pray for you. So, Father, the Bible declares, it says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 2, it says, And Jesus Christ, it says, Through Jesus and through Jesus and through Jesus, because through Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Today, I set them free free from the law of sin and death. Every law that is being used to hold them captive concerning this dimension because they were what? They were conceived in sin. I reverse it and I release them from that law. Today, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I declare your freedom I, by the authority of the living word. You have been set free. You have been set free. You have been set free. It says death was swallowed up in victory. You are going forth in victory because Christ has already dealt with it on the cross. So I speak by the finished work of Christ that those who have oppressed you concerning this dimension, oh, those who have oppressed you, they will be fed with their own flesh and they shall be drunken with their own blood. As with sweet wine, all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, I am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. So for every judgment that was pronounced on you, because you walked in this dimension, I reverse all the judgments and I speak life over you by the authority of the living word. Today is the day that the Lord has made. He says it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. So don't be yoked again into this slavery. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. And Father, by the authority of your word, I judge every power of witchcraft, divination, sorceries, spells, incantations over the lives of your people that were taken away by being the prey of the cerebral. And I release them from that stronghold and I set them free completely. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, I thank you. It is done. Go forth in triumph and victory because you're the blessedness of the Father. Today is the day the Lord has made. Yes, go forth. You're blessed. I love you all so very much. Oh, how much I love you all. <laughs> you all are amazing. God bless you. Have a wonderful and a glorious day in the presence of the Most High God. Amen and amen. Blessings.